zero at the end. Mm -hmm. Right. So I don't forget. I'm hitting record, so I don't forget. <laughs> so um, I'm, hang on. I'm gonna hang out for just a few minutes. And by yes. the way, you guys remember that like uh, no painting class today. Um, uh, but we will have painting for the rest of the year. <laughs> I can't imagine like any like reason we would not, but I cannot do it today. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, it's uh, anyway. It is, um, you know, even like this. So you did a good yeah. job, Jeannie. Like you looked at it, you decided this just decides that this needs to be a different, a different setup, right? Mm -hmm. And you just did it. Yeah. That's great. And well, that's really what you want. I'm cropping and saving and then it comes back with and the people are still there. I'm like, why is this not saving for me? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a pain. Darn people. Wow. Well, I, and I um, uh, put out a little grid on here that I, as soon as people kind of trickle in um, to just remind people spatial because this is... Um, something with these rocks especially um it's easy to just make them a lot bigger than you than you think so mm -hmm. it's always to be in a good habit to uh to scale uh that's how we got on the the <laughs> why do we have this proportional wheel i've had it for so long it's like what sizes and it's like easy it's just not like meant a lot of mental energy going towards <laughs> yeah that's right leah <laughs> tremendous amount of mental energy trying to figure out how that dang thing works <laughs> oh that was funny okay. Hi, Julia. so i've got christina i've got julia we've got jean i'm hanging around just long enough to take attendance and then i'll zip off nice to see everybody yeah no this is fun <laughs> good job julia on your um on your oh, painting that was, amazing. That was so good yeah, yeah. And I thought the leaves were fantastic. I, it's a good observation to notice that mm -hmm. some under colors will affect your, you can't just lay any color on top of any color. Mm -hmm. When you're painting an acrylic and an oil, you can more, you can mm -hmm. do that more, right? Because once it dries, they don't mix together. Mm -hmm. But as with pastels, as long as the paint is wet, as long as mm -hmm. the ant material is wet, certain like just throwing color on on more color is going to create what I like to call the neutral zone, the the mid tone three gray. And the more you try to throw into it, the worse it gets. Mm -hmm. I call it red. The black hole of color where all color gets sucked out. And you've just got this flat neutral gray. So it's red. Right, it kind of forces people. Like I think you know, when you don't know how color works, it, you're more likely to throw. And you like color, you're more likely to throw all the colors at it. But then after a while, you're like, oh wait, I can't do that. <laughs> you're for, you know, you're forced not to do it. It never dries. So with pastels, more than anything else, you have to be thinking about top and bottom layers. So it's a good lesson to learn because after that, you're like. Oh, okay, I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> it's not with these colors. <laughs> it, it shows me the value of Marie's lessons as well, because you make it so easy for us, Marie. Like you lay it out, and it's like, but hey, and then it always pops, and, it, and then it's like, oh, I didn't do that. Oh, so good. Shit. <laughs> I have orange under my blue. It's turning, you know, gray, you know, it's turning gray, or I have a yellow under my purple. It's like not working. I found, um, Julia, that with pastels, I always like to do really bright. That's the time to do it is your underpainting, is do those bold, bright colors, mm -hmm. but still stick with what Leah said. Pay attention to your, your color theory, right? Like, pay attention to your colors, and and because um, that does make, make sense. I mean, you don't want to do a bright yellow. I mean, you could, but... That's but it's I not gonna often neutralize depending on what you put on top can really and, and that's right because with pastels which is different from oils like Leah said um, pastels it's harder to go darker down the end right. so 
So you want to really build those layers and start with those brights, really knowing that you can just calm them down and mute them wherever you need to. And then it like creates this like visual harmony with those brights and then and then those muted colors over it. And it's just like, it's really beautiful. And you, you're learning that. Because um, as you look at pictures, you're gonna just instantly know, ooh, I think I want this color underneath. It's always looking at that picture saying, what goes first? Right. That's what I struggled That's with. That's not in tree. Tree. I think the other ones were, you know, the other bits on, on the painting were okay, but the tree, I was like, because it had so, you know, it was green and red and orange and what I was like, what the hell do I use? I, I just, I really struggled right. to figure that out. Um, so I went with like a kind of a teal blue, I think, like a, a kind of a greeny blue to pop the orange, but I don't think it was quite right. Because so. they so, probably to get all right. Yeah. Right. Yep. And and also like one of the things too is thinking about where the light's coming from and what time of day, right? When we were studying about the haystacks. And so you're thinking, mm -hmm. is it warmer? Is it cooler? Um yeah. those that's really gonna help you decide what effect you want. And so um I always try it on trees, right? We build up with at least three darks in the same value, build, okay. build, build. And then depending on what kind of sanded paper you have tooth wise, you may not be able to build as much and use a little bit of fixative for that texture at the end. That's the kind of style I like. You don't have to use the fixative, right? But um, what you want is that glow showing through those greens. And that's why those orange and reds just pop underneath. Like Leah's burn paintings, have you been watching those? Her burn paintings are like, oh, that's that's letting that really warm red come through those greens. It's a complementary color. Uh, whenever, whenever I get stuck, I think, what am I looking at, and what's the complementary color that I can go underneath? If but I get stuck, what's the, but what's the medium too? Because yeah, true. <laughs> this, I'm using acrylic, so I can lay greens on top of reds, and they pop each other. But in pastels, they don't pop each other. They yeah. mix together and become muddy. Right. Okay. Right. Can, can I just it? say something, Leah? Yeah. It looks a lot to me like you're painting every leaf here. <laughs> the master of the you are so busted. <laughs> oh, Jeannie, you're hilarious. You're hilarious. Oh. But, it, so I have but, not painting every leaf. These actually didn't take the secret. The dirty little secret is these didn't take too long. <laughs> no, take well. Honestly, and so, you see a lot of drip texture is used to create the feeling of leaves. Yes. <laughs> like playing every leaf, but like just letting some of the drips come down and create some of that texture for me. <laughs> so the trick in pastel with like what Leah was talking about is the blending, that red and green. That's why I choose to do a wet underpainting. Okay. Why? Because it fixes that bright red on the sanded paper. So I'm not getting the, the muddiness at the end. Um, I, that's a trick. Um, so sometimes when I'm going after a certain look, I can just do a dry rub, right, with a, with a foam or whatever. But generally, if I don't want a lot of mixing, that's why I do a wet underpainting. I want to preserve those brights. Yeah. So I don't, I'm making that underpainting do the work for me. Make the underpainting good. The rest is easy. All right, you guys, I'm going to let you off to it. Have a great class. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. <clears throat> so I think that's exactly right, Julie. You found out with that tree, 
why it wasn't doing what you wanted to do. So try it out, do some some mixing of those bright, warmer colors. And that's why what we're gonna do in today's painting, right? Is like, that's exactly what I was trying to think. How do I want to create this feeling? It's evening time, I think, the sun, that warm glow on the rocks and mm -hmm. also the people sitting in the chairs down below <laughs> enjoying the sunset so we're kind of going after that really pretty evening glow and so i really don't want to do too much work per se i want to have my underpainting pretty much tell a story and then have those really beautiful highlights on the top so that's the key is spending the time thinking about what we want to put down on the underpainting. Um, I actually didn't get a whole lot of time like I normally do. So today we're going to kind of, all of us are going to be together as I'm testing out some sticks here. I threw out some, um, but uh, we'll, we'll just kind of play with it. That's kind of why I did a bright peachy red uh, back here because we know we've got the sun hitting that. It's gonna be a warm glow. Even though it's in the distance, it will be muted. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, glaze over some, some lighter colors to, to knock that back. But, um, and then Christina, I wasn't sure if you were here, but we um, are, I kind of did a light grid um, on my sanded paper just to reinstate um, it's really easy with structures in our landscape paintings, even rocks, um, a lot of times barns, even people, they just tend to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and this is just, just to remind you, and you can grid if you want, you don't have to. Um, I, I like to have everyone at some point just be scaling, so using your finger, right, and mm -hmm. saying, okay, here is this rock and it fits in, well, this one's bigger. And so if this rock is this size, okay, well, all right, we've got one, two, well, this rock is about two and we only have a little bit of space. So you're just kind of measuring to see how things fit. Sure. Um, and so I don't know, I'm sure everyone here has enough drawing experience, but, I know we've had a few new people come in and out. And so um, we, Leah and I were ch chatting this weekend. She's been helping me with the upcoming art show. And, um, you know, it's always, even me, I have to turn my paint, my picture upside down sometimes just to get my brain to shut off and to just mm -hmm. look at the shapes. That's another really good tip. If you feel like your brain's just saying, oh, this is a rock and you're just kind of drawing, and then you're like, why is this proportionally not looking right? Turn everything upside down. Okay. Turn, off your, turn off your left side of your brain, get your right brain engaged. It's a very easy trick and um, it's very helpful. I do it a lot. Um, so for today, I, like I said, I just threw it on here as a reminder, um, but for you guys, if you don't have to, um, take your time, just kind of sketch it out. You can use a pencil, you can use um, a new pastel, like a hard uh, pastel, maybe like a lighter color. Um, and I have an orange here. So just pay attention to where right water levels out. So we really wanna make sure these lines are, are level, okay? Um, so especially where the water hits right back in here. So that's an important horizon line. Um, and so I did, I did grid this out a little bit, just so you guys can see here. Um, just for, and I sent it to you as well um, in the chat. So go ahead and start sketching your, your picture out. Mm -hmm. And um, take your time, let me know, send over pictures once you're done, and then we'll just, we'll start in. So I might just use this. Let's see. Oh, 
here, I think I actually, the other line is, the other gridded line is up here. That's the her. That way you can kind of see. Doesn't like me drawing on this picture for sure. It'll be my first time using this sanded paper. I was surprised. It's like um, sandpaper. Isn't it? <laughs> it is. And then I have heard people use like sanded paper at the at the hardware store, but oh no. man. No. <laughs> this there's a reason why you spend money on this sanded paper. <laughs> it is expensive though. Oh, it is. And um, Christina, did I tell you how you can make your own? For practicing. Oh, no. Okay. Wow. Okay. Real quick, I'll send this picture to you. Um, this is called, and you need to get clear. This okay. is Liquitex Clear Gesso. It's got grit in it. Okay. It's very inexpensive. And then get some watercolor paper. Uh -huh. You can do cold press or hot press, it doesn't really matter. Okay. And then you can tone it with like, this is a piece that I did. You can just take acrylic paint over it or watercolor paint. Uh -huh. You can tone it whatever color you want and then cover it. Once it's dry, then paint that clear gesso over it and it makes it just like sanded paper. Oh, perfect. Okay, then. So that's really inexpensive way to practice. You're not going to you're not going to get the exact results that UART paper gives you, but. Marie, can you use the wet on that though? The wet? Yeah, can you use the alcohol on it? I don't think so. Okay. I, I think that's why, why this sanded paper is so lovely is you can use anything on it. You can use the um, isopropyl alcohol, you can use water, you can use the um you know gambling um uh well that's gambar so but for just practice purposes and you can create really lovely paintings on on using this it's just not archival paper so if you were down the road wanting to really preserve your paintings and frame them i would use the sanded paper um, maybe when i'm painting as well as you and julia and, <laughs> and you Jean. will <laughs> hey, you will be there because these ladies are amazing and they've just I really, think... they started at the beginning uh, of this year. So just think the time. Oh, wow. So okay. just practice, practice and um, yeah, but get the clear gesso and the watercolor paper. And that's a real easy way to and cost effective. Okay, thank you. Yeah. That's a good tip. Yep. Because I, I know it can be super expensive, like ridiculous. I and the what? I thought Christina's car was amazing. I mean, you've only been doing this, what, like a couple of months or something? I thought it was fantastic. Yes. Oh. Thank you. I agree. I agree. And, um, it's, I mean, this is the, the time we get to just play around and have fun and learn. We, we, uh, we get to make mistakes and I, and I expect that because that's the only way we, we learn. The material um, by itself looks painterly already, doesn't it? Just the, just rubbing the thing on paper already looks like you've accomplished something amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? Pastels is so fun. Um, and it's funny, Christina, I, I'm really, um, I'm doing this art show and so all of it is in, um, uh, oh, oil. Oh. oh my gosh. And I haven't been painting oil for a little while and it's definitely been like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? <laughs> so it's been fun. But again, yeah, just trying to remember all the tricks because oil is different. Oil is different, just like acrylic. And like Leah was saying, 
I'm just trying to figure out how to do everything, how it makes sense. And and I, I, I generally don't paint a lot of structures in mine. I like the the freedom of of just the landscape that and and more impressionist style, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah. and I like the texture. I like having fun with texture and um, experimenting in that form. And so I feel sometimes if you get into the barns and it, it it's okay. I like it. I'm doing that right now. It's good to to practice. But I also find that. Um, I don't know, just, I feel like landscapes are, are, are me, um, and I enjoy it, so. And, so. One thing that I do like about these new pastels is <clears throat> the ability to use the edges mm -hmm. and so i did get that brand uh, the new so pastel yeah pretty colors yeah i just have the um the little set i'd like to get the larger and let's see so I'm going to break into some of these lighter colors here. This is just my light violet. Are you using that for the mountain in the back? No, this is going to be for the sky. So I think it's going to be really pretty with that glowy yellow over that purple. You know, that moodiness. This is this is what I'm saying about using some brighter, bolder colors in our underpainting because um, it's harder when we use those colors. If I were just to go in with the yellow on here, like I said, it would just would look flat, it wouldn't look right. And so um, I wasn't really intending to use orange, but yeah, it works. It's what happens, right? And this is like that muted peachy color. I'm going to use this for the back side of the hillside. If you're still drawing, don't worry. Once I put this in, we'll just, this is a soft pastel. Uh, I didn't have hard, so it's, it's going to lay a lot thicker. So I'm just trying to do a really light touch. Okay, and then we'll come back with that violet. It's kind of nice. Sometimes your painting just kind of dictates how things are gonna go. Okay, I'm going to use that darker blue, and I'm just going to put in some I'm looking at the lights and darks. If you need to switch over to your black and white, and that, that just helps you look at those shapes of where the darkness is. That's not pencil you're drawing with. You're already using the pastel? Yep, these are all pastels. Oh. Yep, these are the new pastels.
And notice how these little rocks are all evenly spaced. So just keep in mind, we don't want necessarily even, even, even though we see it, even though we see it. We want to kind of adjust our size. So decide composition. We're kind of having the viewer look from here to here to here to here. So kind of thinking about visually how we want the viewer to go and move throughout our painting. These are okay, but we, we definitely don't want our eye to kind of veer off. So just something to keep in mind as I'm drawing on here thinking, oh, those are kind of even. Um, so I don't know if I really want to have, might just make this one a little bigger. <clears throat> okay. And then I have a little bit of a darker red orange. And I'm just going to kind of put it right down in here. And what do we want to do with this area? I take this color that we use in the back. Come up in here. Okay. If you make a mistake, erasing is okay with a sure. graphite pencil. Okay. Yeah, you can er you can erase. Um, so you can also use um, uh, a dry brush, and you can just kind of knock off the pastel. Oh, okay. if you need to. Um, Like I have, <clears throat> like, this is really soft pastel. So it's going to, when I use it versus the hard pastel, it's just going to fill up, fill up the tooth of the paper a little bit more. Good, Jeannie. Yeah. I think the underpainting is really fun to kind of see where it starts out and then where it finishes. It's like some people say, geez, you know, that looks crazy. How did you do that? <laughs> Why did you pick those crazy colors? Obviously, we won't finish this today, but yeah, good. So Jeannie, when you go in for our alcohol wash, just try to blend your dark blues within your um, rocks so there's no real hard line. So you're going to soften it a little bit. Um, but of course, we're going to lay out over it. But um, yeah, it's going to look great. And we want to be careful of, of 
too much of a, a straight horizontal dark line across. This is something that um, I have to remind myself too. Why? Because it's like a visual bearer. Um, so you'll see composition wise when I talk about that, um, uh, like let's say you have a picture with a fence line and you'll see pictures with the fence going straight across here. That That is actually a visual barrier right away. It doesn't let the viewer come into your painting. It just says like, it just is like immediate stop. So, um, you know, like just be aware of that while we're painting and looking at everything that, that we're not creating any visual barriers. Rocks are funny. They, they have a lot of shape, right? And so in learning about painting rocks, um, that is something to think about the shape. Um, you know, are they boxes? Are they cylinders? How, how, how are they shaped? And then where's the light coming from? So we, we know the light's coming out, you know, here it's on this side. It's, it's coming out from, from the evening. So it's shining like an evening light. So that was, that's the next step is thinking about, and then planes. Meaning, here's our dark, our dark, uh, here, right here, right? Our shapes of our darks that we've already put in, and we've got a little shape here. And then our mid values, so we've got mid values here. So one being our darks, two being our mid values, and then three being our light. So that's another way to break down our our shapes when you're looking at your rocks and thinking about the values. Um, and then the next is layering our color down. So okay. looking at your, um, now that you've got your your darks, your mids and your lights, now we're thinking about, okay, <clears throat> what are we going to lay down for those values and picking out your colors? And then, of course, at the end, we'll refine and, and look at. But that's kind of how I approach the rocks, um, is thinking about the planes and then the values. Where's the light source? Um, and that's kind of like, we don't want them to look like a perfect shape because rocks are not perfect shape. And so we just want to be aware of that. Create those little cragginess, uneven angles on the sides, you know, really look at how these, this edge, you know, goes back to those edges, really looking at those edges. It doesn't have to be exact, but for learning purposes, really do pay attention to this, right? You know, this is kind of like a real big triangle. So, you know, maybe maybe we need to bring this out. It is what it is, right? But um, you do have the ability to maybe not make it look exactly like a triangle. So just adjust. And then we'll come back into these negative shapes and, and carve back into around these rocks to, to get to what looks right. Um, Jeannie said earlier, I'm not gonna add the people. I agree, I'm not gonna add the people either. Um, but what we wanna do first is get our, our colors laid down like we did. And then um, let me know if you guys are ready. I can uh, start the underpainting process. You guys need more time, Julia and Christina, just let me know. <laughs> I will have to catch up. I just realized the the grid was a, the photo is a two by three, right? And uh -huh. the, I use the dimensions of the paper, which is not that ratio. So I'm redoing it, I'll be quick. But yeah, you can oh, go yeah. ahead and start, I'll catch up. No, no worry, and good job. That was, we were joking about this stupid proportional wheel. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't register. <laughs> I already oh had God. mountains and stuff laid out, and I was like, it doesn't look right. <laughs> Good job, though. 
good job. That that's exactly what you want to do because it is. And that's what happens is you look at it and you're like, why is this not looking right? I think, geez, it's just like a couple rocks. Well, how much space is it really taking up in the painting? You'd be surprised. They usually you usually draw them a lot bigger than they are. I do at least. It's just what happens. Let's see what I have. I am going to use Maybe this is the only brush I've got. Okay. Okay, um, I'm gonna start up here. This is kind of a stiff, stiff brush. I may not like it, but that's what I have. Then you kind of let's see a fan brush. Maybe I'll use that one. I don't know. Let's see here. I'm just looking at my picture here. I'm wiggling my brush around because it is a fan brush. And I'm really trying to make sure I pay attention to this horizon. Yes, good job, Julia. All right. There's an artist that likes to use the fan brush. It's kind of cool, her technique. She paints and does her underpainting and then she'll paint some more pastel and then use her fan brush again. So she'll do it twice, almost like a two underpaintings but the effect especially on the trees are really cool i'm going to try it out i kind of like it it's like you can do a really light light color and then lay on another color and then paint it on and then so it's just layers after layers like i said the underpainting probably is my favorite part in doing this you can just really create some beautiful surprises. And is it the same fan brush you used for oil painting? Yeah, you can use this for oil painting. Yep. Oh. Yeah, just be aware <laughs> that sanded paper, it will eat your your brushes. I mean, they'll they'll lose quite a bit um, just because of the, obviously it's sanded. So you're sanding down your, your brushes. So I try to, I try to keep a few just for my pastels. But um, right now I'm doing a ton of oil painting in another room. And so I've pretty much taken all of my, my brushes out of here that I would use. That's okay. Another, um, with the alcohol, you can kind of dab it and it can lift some of that pastel off if like maybe you got it too dark and too much. I'm going in this horizontal direction because this is the way the sand and the reflection. So just <clears throat> as I'm moving my um, paint, that's what I'm thinking about. And 
That's okay if it goes over here into the tree, the bush. So I'm gonna treat it and paint it like a bush. Just putting more paint. This is just a paper towel. I'm just kind of mixing this in here. I want that right there. Pushing the paint around. Marie, I sent you my drawing. Okay. I don't know what to do, <clears throat> so I'll be honest. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, that's what I'm here for. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, that looks great. So now what you want to do is lay in the color. So on your rocks, you're going to want to look at the darks to the medium to the lights. Okay. So start in with, do you have um, some light purple? I do, hang on, I'll show you what I've got. Okay. I love just looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> I know, How right? How pretty these are. <laughs> I agree. I oh, wow, know. aren't they pretty? Okay, great. So why don't you go ahead and with your sky, um, take, you're gonna wanna take some of like a, your light, the bottom row. The fifth one in is like a light pink. Mm, okay. So you're gonna wanna use that on your sky and down here in the lighter parts. The pink yeah. for the sky? Uh-huh. Interesting. Yep. Oh, and do you want to paint the light colors first? Um, it doesn't matter. You can, um, you're going to paint around your areas with the sky and the lighter parts. And then you're going to come and use um, all the way to the very far right, that dark um, red violet. Okay. Like second uh, from the corner next to the purple? Uh, no, all the way to the very end, bottom row to the very far right. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, that's going to be for your darks on your rocks and down in these little rocks and down here into the tree. Okay. Um, and then you're going to use your orange, same bottom row, which will be uh, the second one over from that pink that you pulled. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. You're going to you're going to use that for your hillside in the back. Interesting. And for the rest of your rock. All right. 
next guy. So start filling in. I think I'm going to end with my underpainting for right now. Oh, this is the underpainting. I see. Yeah, you're going to lay lay all that in and then you're going to use your um, alcohol or your um, like a turpentine, your Gamsol. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to paint that on, turn it to essentially like a liquid paint for your underpainting. And do you want to cover all the little nooks and crannies of the paper yep. when you're putting the pastel on? Yep. So it's kind of a thick, okay, got it. Yep. So just go ahead and fill in and I'll help you move along. Once you get it, send a picture of her once you filled it in and, um, and then we're just going to keep building on top. Sure, sure. Yeah. Great, Jeannie. Ooh, I already get the mood. <laughs> so you won't need a whole lot. I mean, that's what the beauty of it is, is especially I love that back hillside with that purple. It's going to be really pretty when we then just kind of add that muted. It's like that hazy in the evening, that sea air where it just kind of diffuses in the back. It's like, I love it. That's probably one thing I loved about this picture when I saw it was just that pretty evening glow and that moodiness, I guess. We've been having a lot of really pretty sunsets lately. Although being down at my dad's, which is a two hour drive south from me, uh, we have a lot of fires going on out here again, real bad fires. And it was so smoky. Ugh. So it was not not like the beach. I saw some friends at the ocean and they were taking pictures and it was just beautiful. Are you guys pretty warm, Jeannie? Still warm? Or you got the rain from Ida? That that was really ugly, Ida. Um, but and today it's a little rainy. But yesterday it was gorgeous. It was like you know, eighty degrees, low humidity. Just yeah, yeah. Where are you at, Christina? Again? I'm in LA. LA. Okay. So yeah, you're getting nice weather and not too much smoke, probably. No, it's eighty three degrees here. I just came from walking the dogs. Actually, it's great. Yeah. How about you, Julia? Oh, sorry. We're, um, we're lovely today, actually. It's been so awful. August has been just gray and boring and not warm, not cold, just nothing. Not, not a typical August, but today is just gorgeous. And yeah. Good, good. So you guys have not had the typical weather then? I don't know what typical is anymore, you know, it's just so weird. We had we had all our warmth in April, and then, you know, May was not too bad, and then we were nearly 40 degrees in June, which is insane, and then July and August have been just like nothing. So, I, yeah, I don't know, I don't recognize it anymore. <laughs> it's just bizarre. I feel like, that way too out here in Oregon. It's been weird. I mean, we've is. we've literally had one of the hottest summers on record no rain it's been in the 80s and 90s consistently i think june 14th they said was the last time we had rain it's like bizarre what it's like out there with those fires and the temperatures the way they are i mean i just it sounds horrific it is the fires are the scariest yeah must be terrifying it is not fun. Good How are you doing? Everyone. What was that? Where is everyone? Um, I'm up near Portland, Oregon. 
-hmm. And uh, Jeannie's out in New York. And Julia's in the UK. So oh, cool. Yeah. So it's kind of fun having everyone from all over. <laughs> I mess with my rocks. <laughs> I know. So rocks aren't that easy. Nope. Nope. They look, they look like a bunch of bushes right now. Oh, well, never mind. I can clean them up after. That's what I love about pastels. <laughs> so. It is. And I think, like, I know Leah teaches this in her class, too, really breaking down those those values, those areas of lights and darks. That will really help you. Yeah. Good, Julia. See? You'll be able to just lay your colors down. And, th and don't forget... Uh, I mean, I do this intuitively. You guys have been doing it, you you know, but just as a reminder for like Christina being new to this, when you're painting your sky, paint it like your sky. When you're painting your rocks, follow the planes, the direction of your rocks, you know, vertical, just like your trees, vertical, nice. just like your mountain, your water, we're painting it horizontal. So just just be aware of that. Um, I know rocks, they can be fun or they can be annoying. Um, <clears throat> these are not the typical gray colored rocks that you will see out here. So I they're love it. Enormous as well, aren't they? When you look at the people, you realize the scale of these things. They're just massive. They're massive. Um, out here on the Oregon coast, we have a place called Cannon Beach. It's very well known for for these big spires that come up out of the ground, and they're enormous like this. It's it's quite quite the sight. They're beautiful especially in the evenings with the sun. I love it. So I'm, I'm moving along with you guys. I've kind of thrown out some, some pastels too, but um, we'll kind of just start in with some sky. How are you doing, Christina? Um, moving along. I'm putting color on it. I, I'm figuring if these are not necessarily the colors I, I think I'm seeing in the picture, but I guess they're the underpainting. So. Yeah, they're going to be the, the colors that we're, so we're going to lay on top of it, uh -huh. which is going to be more of the browns and purples, okay. which are really going to look pretty with the, with the orange underneath. I don't get the, the honestly, I'm not very good with the color theory yet so i'm guessing you're making it kind of red in the bottom because you're putting green on it and you want the opposite colors yeah that's a color. yep that's a good starting point is thinking about that yep good job okay um let's see here i've got some light creamy yellow see if i can't drag that over my purple it's almost the same color as my paper and it's a um it's almost like a rembrandt a semi-soft i'm just gonna keep some of that purple shining and just very lightly come over that purple probably a little bit more filling the tooth at the top and then just leave that purple hazy down at the bottom, just slightly glazing. And I'm coming actually over my rocks. It's okay. It's gonna be 
one of the things about pastel is a lot of back and forth, back and forth. Um, so notice these shapes of these trees. So we, and I like that. It, it's in the distance, but I like, it gives you a sense of how this whole coastline and the rocks. So I'm gonna kind of add that in. So I've got this kind of hard pastel. It's like a purpley. And I'm just gonna use, I'm getting it flat, very, very light. I'm just kind of add a little bit on the On here. Using it vertically to create some of those trees up and down. Kind of drag some down into here. Doesn't have to be exact. We'll come back over this with another color to mute it. What color are you using up there? Purple? Yeah, it's like a light, light, uh, or a muted dark purple. Um, let me take a picture of it for you. Please. Marie, did I color this in enough or do I need to color it in some more? There are like, I didn't um, quite cover every bit of the paper. That's okay, that, that looks fine. So you're ready to use your, um, are you using the alcohol? Uh-huh. Okay, so, yep. So go ahead and just start in on your sky and your water and everything. And just mix it. And so you wanna start with your lightest colors first just so it doesn't muddy up your water or your alcohol. Okay. And, you know, keep in mind when you're painting your rock, make sure you're painting, you know, vertically up and down. And when you're doing your sky, you know, you're making sure that you're painting it like a sky and your water. So just keep that in mind. Oh, got it. Okay. And you're learning. So this is the time to just practice, practice. It's fun. Uh -oh. I remember when we were doing... I, I think the first few classes I turned up and I, I watched you, Marie, and I had absolutely no idea what you were doing. <laughs> and I had no idea what I was doing, but I was just following it along and thinking, hey, this is weird. But it's kind of, and then I think about lesson four, I started thinking, hey, I can see the colors here. And I can actually <laughs> see where the lines are. And it was like a revelation for me. Just suddenly it all made sense. See, and, and that, so like, I know that's a part of it is just keep going through the steps. You're training yourself. You know, I, Julia, I love that because when I learned how to paint waves at a workshop was the first time that I, I was so new, like completely new. This is like my second attempt practically. And I was way over my head. I realize that now. But what I took away was always look at what is underneath your your top colors. And that is very hard, right? Waves with all the foam and all this action, but really the water is the water. So look at that color, it's the same here. The rock is that color. And then the sun, the atmosphere, the aerial perspective, what's going on is what's creating that light. And so it's, it's fun to see how this, 
how this changes. This is kind of like a a muted purple, and I'm just testing out here. Um, it's this top. And I may even have to go lighter, but I'm just kind of glazing it over over my my hillside here. Kind of same, and I'm leaving that really pretty orange because I like it. I like it because it's telling you that the sun is. And I'll have to use a even lighter color down here, right? To soften that. So. This is a very, very light, just barely touching it. I don't want to fill up the tooth of the paper. Always just, we're just getting the first layer down. Even like this back water, which will really diffuse, we, we want that real muted, almost like a purpley blue. That's a real nice purpley blue. I feel like I sound like Bob Ross. Isn't <laughs> it just, isn't it just a happy color? <laughs> Uh, I saw my first episode last week. Just, I'd never seen Bob Ross before. Oh, okay, that's funny. <laughs> oh, isn't he funny? And he gets so excited. He's like, oh, I just love this. And he'd whack his brush. Isn't that just great? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Yep. He's a little like uh, Heel Hauser in the sense that he gets really excited about. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. And you love that because it is, it's exciting. It's, <sighs> I just love it. So I'll show you the color I just used. And this is a purpley blue soft pastel. <clears throat> I'm coming over my rocks and that's okay. Oh, you're already painting over your underpainting. Yep. Yeah. Good, Christina. That's great. So what you've done is you've created, you have more dark, right, in the foreground. Mm -hmm. And as you're moving in the distance, it gets lighter and cooler and muted. Okay. This is the time that you get to use really fun colors and bright colors, but also paying attention to aerial perspective. So foreground, you're gonna see more detail, right? Because the trees <clears throat> here, and then as you move in the back, you don't, you don't see, all you see is just the outline of the shapes. And so when you're choosing those, underpainting colors, it's the same premise. You're, you're not gonna do um, a bright red <clears throat> in the back. It's gonna be a muted red because it's in the distance. So okay. just keep that in mind. <clears throat> so the now, color, sorry, the that, colors you lay are the colors that you end up with. There's no mixing. Mm -mm, you're gonna be layering different colors <laughs> on it, yep. And one thing with pastels is we're kind of starting with the dark. So that's why this is a more intense blue here with the water is then we're gonna lay some lighter colors on top. You're working from the darks to the lights. Usually that's how it works with pastels. <clears throat> it's harder to go darker if you've gone too light. So whenever, just go very bold colors, very bright in the beginning and then you can you can tone those down. 
I will give it a shot. Yeah. Yep. Just work at it. That's the best. And um, I I know that I just I really like to just kind of bring color in wherever I can. Is that that's the same color you yeah. using? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I'm just kind of adding little bits and pieces here and there. I want the I want the front, the foreground, and the background to play. I want them to be all in the sandbox having a great time. If I've got them, you know, sectioned off to where this is one group of colors and this is another group, they're not going to mix. And so always with the premise of painting is if you're using a color here, where else can I can I put it? Where I've got the stick in the hand. I mean, it's just even like with oil painting, really keeping a limited palette and mixing off maybe those three, four core colors. It is very harmonious at the end. You're keeping the same. I know it's very easy with pastels. We'll just grab like 40 different sticks and, and it, it, because you want, you want to, but really try to limit if you can. So, um, the blue is the water, yes, but we also have water laying here over the sand and it's wet, obviously. And we know that it's reflecting the sky. And this is reflecting down here from the rocks because you can kind of see almost some green in here. At least I do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so in thinking about that, like think about what you're, this is again, the top layer we're looking at underneath. So see these dark colors, see those dark shadows. That's what we're adding in first. This reflected light will be the very last. So down in here, I see this really dark blue. Okay, that's letting me know we've got some really dark colors in here, right? And then we've got, then we're going to lay that real muted color over the top, building from the darks up to the lights. So wet sand, um, prime example, you know, this is going to be, it, it's in the evening and we know sand is sand color, but it's in the evening and it's wet. So it's going to be darker and it's, it looks a little bit with that sun reflected on it. And then we've got the reflection of the rock. It, that's why it's looking dark. It's almost like a dark mm, red violet. And so that's, that's what we're going for. Even with the sand, adding in, see these darks reflection, reflected pieces of the, the wet, wet sand. So it's okay to add in some of this really dark color here. So we're going to come over it with, with that really pretty red violet. It's just building up these layers. And this is a, a real pretty dark eggplant or more red violet and I'll take a picture and I'm gonna use it again. Where can I use this color? Good. Yes, Julia, good. And so see how you can just keep bringing that really soft purple up into your trees. Okay, good, Misha. What was that? I'm trying to see if my son will paint with me. Oh, all right. So this is the color. I'm starting with the rocks. And you can see I put some on the rock. I put some down on the on the sand, right? Because it's reflecting. Oops. 
And color is relative, Christina. One thing is it's good to try to pick out your palette, but also keep in mind it's going to react differently once it's laying next to another color. And so you'll see you'll see me say, okay, this is what I want to do. This is what the palette's going to look like, but then we may have to change. It's just um, you find out what everything, how it, it works with each other. Mm -hmm. This is a warmer brown and I'm, I'm putting it on the side that I know it's catching the light, so. Oh, I just realized these rocks are really big. They're, I'm seeing little dogs now. See how big, that's what Julie was saying, they're massive. Wow. Yes. Yep. And look, really look at your rock, which way it's going, what direction. If you were to stand right next to it and look at it. Here, <clears throat> kind of need to get my um. in so I can kind of gauge my my scale um, before we can get going so I think I'm going to get some darks into that tree um, but let why don't you guys send over where you're at or I can or we can wait um, in terms of, in terms of the tree I'm going to take some um, probably let's see what color this is that's oh, a little dark Oh, what do I want? I kind of want a dark green. Maybe even darker than that. I think I'm going to do these two. Notice I'm using this side of my paper. I'm looking at how everything is going to look with each other. Mm. Pretty light. Let's see here. I need more of an art. So question. Yeah. <laughs> really rookie question. I guess I have like little bits of powder all over the thing now. How do you get, you just tilt it and make it fall to the ground? Yeah. Don't okay. blow on it. It's not healthy to breathe it in. So just hold it up and you can tap it and let it fall down. I think what I'm going to do is uh, lay these colors in for the for the tree. Mm 
moving from the left to the right. So we've got a couple dark, like a dark blue and a dark green for the shadow in here. Um, just, just light. Looking at the shapes. Paying attention to how far it kind of comes down. We'll use some dark green. Squinty my eyes. Not painting any limbs or anything yet, just This is the blue you're using right now, Marie. Oh, actually, yeah. you've just got blue and green. Okay. I've got blue and green. Yeah. So. Which is kind of crazy because what I see and then when it shows up on the picture, it's like really bright. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. Yeah, I just wanted to get something down so I can see what what I need to do. Oh, wow. Okay. Need to get some This is just some light, purple. And let's see. It's good to have your pastel just really allow for it to to blend for you. You know, that's that's the beauty of of the pastel is you don't have to use your finger necessarily. So that's going to have to get darker. I'm curious about the choice of that purple in the lower left-hand corner. The which one? The purple in the trees. 
tell me again why you because it's the shadows oh oh um i didn't i used uh blue and green is it showing up purple oh i see yeah and is it to make the shadows yes yes yeah, because remember, we're starting with the dark and then we're building up to the lights. And I shouldn't use black. No, generally, I don't ever use black. I never, I'll use a dark purple. Dark purple is a really good shadow color. Um, like, I have, um, Yeah, like this really dark purple. That I'll use. Oh dear. I'm just kind of getting the hang of it, right? You know, just learning how the edge and what what you want to do with pastels is you want to have it work for you. We don't want to use it as a pencil to to draw like this, like a square. Mm -hmm. We're going to use our pastel to create that square. We don't we 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 don't want it to do this. We want to use the edge to create that edge. We want it's, we 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 when like this dark shaded area. We don't want to just do this. We want to use our pastel like this to create that that shadow like that. Okay, so use your pastels size. And that's why we have this testing strip here is that we're gonna use to, to get, get that edge that we want. And some of the pastels are in square, some are round. There's a reason because uh, you can have better edges by using that, that square, you can get those nice, straight edges without drawing on it. If that makes, hopefully that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And this, you know, just And when I use the term glazing, I'm taking my pastel and going very lightly over, but letting that underneath color shine through. And see how this rock kind of, it comes up. It's kind of coming up like this, or this rock is at an angle. Saying hello. Right. <laughs> and just the fun part too is just all you have to do is just li little bits of mark mark making 
with your pastel and you can get that real nice. One of the things with pastel with rocks is you can get that great marks where painting's a little bit harder, you know, so. Just dragging down a little bit into the sand. I also use the fixative, which is nice too. You can use that on your trees or if you want to fix a color. It holds it, like Leah said, and then you can build on top of it. Like we've got these really fun golden You can't see. Yeah. <laughs> That more of a kind of a mustardy color that you've yeah got it's like um oh, here we go so see right here in the picture where we have like that orangey color bouncing up underneath lighting up So I'm kind of just starting that right in here. And then, you know, we'll we'll carve in these lighter colors within it. And it's just a process, right? I mean, as I'm going through here, I'm just getting my shapes, looking where I'm at. <clears throat> you know, need to come back in here with some, um, let's see, some purples. Oh, no. It's kind of dark. if I really want that. Might be a time to do some fixative. Right now? On my tree. Oh. I'm using 500 grit. So it does not have a lot of tooth, which means I can tell once I'm reached my max with how much I can put down, then it's like, no, nope, no more. <laughs> they were out of 400. They've been out of 400. Down to 40 because I couldn't get any 400 here either. Really? Um, okay. Yeah, and it's um, it's actually holding up pretty well. Yeah, you got uh, yeah. So yours is even grittier. So you've got a lot of tooth, which is I, I like. If I'm gonna go that route, I'll go that route and get the 320. Um, I know that there's some artists that even prefer doing that. So, it's like, I don't blame them. Okay. Just, 
I'm just throwing out some colors here, trying to see what I want. What do I want? Maybe. Do you use your fingers to smudge at this point? To I try mix? not to use my fingers very often. Um, you can uh, on some things, like if I'm doing some reflecting, like reflections. Mm -hmm. um, but I try really hard to just uh, use my pastel to, to blend. Okay, let's see. And might use this dark, dark brown and come back in here. Darken up these. Another brown. Peachy. I'll take a picture of that. Just building up the color on the rock. What happens is, is when we add these colors on here, then in relation to the value behind it, I need to lighten it up a little bit. Were you going to say something, Jeannie? <clears throat> oh, I broke one. <laughs> See, my rocks are already trying to grow. Wrong color. So hard to get the colors right. Yeah, it is, especially with this dark brown. Yeah. And then you have a slight, and I feel like I need to come back over this hillside again. Trying to get that real muted 
back how are you, side. How are you muting it with, I was trying to do it with a little bit of white and then blending it again. Yep, you're gonna be using the sky color and just coming back over it. Yep. And even with a very light, um, this might be too dark. Like a, almost a pinky color. Has a, almost like a, a pink to it. Mm -hmm. See how I think that's the the trick is trying to figure out what color over what color that you're going to get to make that. Come out. So I'm just going back and forth. Interesting. And using these, let's see here, very muted colors. I know. See how it just tapping and got a little bit of darkness down in here, just a little. And coming back. the right one. Oops. So see its edges you come back and then you realize, okay, I got to go back to this edge, right? Because I just lost my edge. Yeah. And I like that part of the rock. And so I'm going to put it back in. I'm gonna come back up here just a little bit. You see, I'm I'm not drawing. I'm I'm making the pastel work for me. Okay. So shadow. Actually, I want it to come back a little more. And
I'm just coming back in with the darks again. And then I'll come back in with the to mute it. Kind of have a I'm just softening these edges here because they are in the distance, but I still want to see them. I still want to see that they're there. So down here, I'm going to use my fixative. So I can layer some more. You guys are probably fine, but mine is such a fine grit. dry it off. I notice I have not done anything yet with these uh, right here in the front. You know, these this reflection, just not quite ready for that. This is just a blue. Add in just a little bit. A little bit here because that's where I'm going to add in the the water. The reflection, which is going to be a very light, um, light, light blue. More of a What's that creamy? Yeah, just I'll take a picture of what I just used. So I laid down these colors. it. So I took the darker blues right on the base and then now I'm taking this light um, it almost has like it's like an off-white creamy has almost a green tint to it, it looks like. And I'm just 
very lightly taking it. Just to first lay in where I want this to be. So we see we've got some here. And kind of back into here. Some right in here. Doesn't have to be exact or perfect. Just you're just putting it in to give an idea where that light's hitting. It's just gonna be Very light. And, you, and you'll you'll start to press a little harder as you're looking at where, when it comes up against the the rock, but just to get some of that down. Of course, you know you'll start adding some more blue within this reflection. Um, It's going to be a very light muted blue, though, remember. Why isn't uh why don't you guys send me over where you're at so I can see. Okay. A long way behind as always, Marie. <laughs> uh, the, and this is just we're practicing, right? It's all about scale and um this is not a super easy um, picture. So Christina, don't get frustrated. This is definitely a little bit more advanced. Um, so you're just laying down and building, building, building. So um, yeah, that looks great, Julia. Really, you're, you're just starting to build yeah. color um, and, and seeing how they relate to each other. And so for you, you'll be um, now adding in your your glazing to diffuse the back. You know, bring in your sky and see that that misty. So you're you're going to start bringing bringing some of that diffused uh, light into your your background, which is going to push your rocks forward. Okay, and then 
yeah, and you're just working on your foreground and the and the bushes just start adding your color and start building on top of that. So you have a a great start. Good, That's Jeannie. Great. Yeah. Yeah, so same thing with you, Jeannie. What you're going to start doing is is bringing and glazing over those lighter colors to push your back mountain, make it recede. Um, I love the rock to the left with all that really yummy, warm uh, browns and rests. It's just it's beautiful. So keep that in mind with your rock over here. And, um, and then just like maybe I would move your shadow piece not right in the center of your rock. I would move it to the left a little bit. Okay. Just because it, it kind of catches your eye like right in the dead center, if I would have to say anything. And then, yeah, you're getting your, your shrubs in and um, working your reflections of your rock down into your water. Um, so I think it's a great. Keep, keep working it. Um, and how are you doing, Christina? Let me see. I'm about to show you. Hang on. <laughs> very vivid oh sorry wrong app yeah no it is it's there you go okay good that's very good okay so the uh critiquing the back here the back side uh -huh. see how it's the same color as your rocks yeah. Okay, we, we want that lighter because it gets lighter in the distance. Yeah. So I want you to take um, a light, light blue color. Oh, okay. Okay, and you're going to take a very light blue and you're going to come over all this, even into your sky. Very light. Okay. I did, that, I did that with the white and then I blended it with my finger and then I was like, it just looks weird now. <laughs> like I just smeared white all over it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But when I blended it with my finger, then all the detail got lost. So I put the old color back. Yep. So you're learning. Exactly. So um, definitely take a light blue. That way, when you glaze over your hillside, it's going to push that back and your rocks will come forward. Okay. And then um, your middle rock. I would just um, add some more lights on it, like you have some light yellows. I'd, and then just kind of drag it, meaning like this, like your uh -huh. color across. So that way you don't see that L shape. You see your L? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Um, and yeah, so you're doing great in your, your trees, uh, just use your your pastel do you have soft pastels or just the hard pastels i have soft soft little too. okay soft ones yeah that's okay um so just practice mark making so like this you see how i'm using it uh-huh okay. and I'm, I'm creating shapes so that's what i want you to do okay with instead of actually drawing, I want you to use the edge of your pastel to create those lights, okay? Sure. Question, Marie. I, uh, so I put the light blue on the, on the background or the, the put atmospheric perspective in. Uh -huh. Is it supposed to look like that close up? Hang on. It, you're supposed to, it's going to be muted. Did you do it already? Um, that's the close up version. Yeah. And then this is. Yeah. Uh, okay. Is yeah, it supposed so, to look like that? So keep, so do it a little harder. Because you, you, yeah, you don't want the, that real green. You, you want it to be softer so yeah mm -hmm. 
like it's out of focus. We're gonna make it out of focus. So squint your eyes. So if you're looking at it and squinting your eyes and you can really still see that dark line, you need to keep adding your pastel over it to, to make it out of focus. You really are, you are just covering over the, the layer you had before. You are. That's With a that. flat layer. Yeah, to push it back. Mm -hmm. okay. You're not blending it at all. Okay. No. Nope, just lightly glazing over it. Good job. It's a lot. It's you know, you just process. it's a process, but yeah, you're getting it. Thank you. Okay, keep working at it, guys. I want to see how they turn out. And do it again if you have to. Have fun with it. Spray it with fix it if you need to. And um, next, so we're going to be doing all sorts of different types of rocks with textures. So I don't know, I'll find something, maybe like a little stream with some boulders or something fun that we can just play around with different shapes. So, all right, good job, guys. Thanks, Marie. Have a great week. And as always, if you have more questions, go ahead and um, send over on all. I'll be here to help. Thanks. All right. Yeah. You what? Looks like a blob. No, no, no. How, how did it get time for class to be over? I know. <laughs> for an hour <laughs> isn't it amazing i i know i that's why like i have to really train myself to pay attention to time because we'd be here till like one and i do to do to do it, it just goes by so fast so i know it's crazy thank you though all right thank you everyone have a good week bye Bye. Bye.